Welcome back to Paranormasite. Two stories left for us today. Sorting things out and Hitomi's help. Mm. We won't be doing that today. We're, we're going to be following Satsumi. We're sorting things out. Hajime Yoshimi's death, Nejima's threat of mass murder, the problems just pile up, putting the detective's goals of collecting all the curse stones in jeopardy. Satsumi leaves Aerio to handle the investigation while he catches a quick break. You know, that would kind of be really messed up. You just wake up and all of a sudden there's just a pile of bodies all over Japan. Oh! Alright, oh, right, who did it? This is gonna be a lot of paperwork. Good morning. Sorry for the wait, boss, but I managed to gather some information. Took you long enough. Hi. Right. Let's hear it! <laughs> Things at the station were pretty hectic, but I managed to get some info. Let me fill you in. Thanks. The floor is yours. <gasps> uh, dialogue. Here we go. A total of three mysterious deaths were confirmed in the area, including the one in this park. So let's start with that one. The young man we found here. <laughs> Shogo. He's been identified as Shog uh, Shogo Okie, 25 years old, a regular old office worker who worked around here. He died of asphyxiation due to water in the lungs. He drowned. Ew. He drowned? In the middle of the park? It's not possible. It's gotta be a curse we're dealing with here. About that, boss. Isn't this park associated with one of the one of those seven mysteries too? I don't know, is it? It's oh the Whispering Canal. Yeah, the Whispering Canal. The water one. That's right! The Whispering Canal! You get a gold star, boss. Get off of me! It does seem <laughs> like that. Boss, please, you don't need another write-up. Uh, it does seem like there'd be a link between a canal and death by drowning, don't you think? Yes. Sharp thinking, Ario. You're starting to get the hang of this. Gold star! <clears throat> so let's assume they're related. What next? Before that, the body of a woman was found behind a residential complex in Kamizawa. The victim has been identified as uh, Tawako Hayashi, 29 years old. She was an office worker who lived on her own in this area. As for the cause of death, well... Yes? The entirety of her body was crushed by some kind of strong external force. No murder weapon was discovered in the area, but considering the way she was found... We're looking for something large, flat, and heavy that could have crushed her in one fell swoop. A womp! Yeah, my wife! <laughs> Hang on. Are you saying she was stepped on? Meaning... Oh! The foot-washing maiden, or mansion, yeah. Exactly. Crushing is the foot-washing mansion's modus operandi. The place the body was discovered is also known to be related to the Seven Mysteries. That is this Namagaki's doing? Shit. I knew he'd used it. Judging by the amount of soul drags, the victim was just a regular person. Not a cult, not, not a curse bearer. Guess we should report this to Paranormal Affairs. Got it. And as for the third victim... Oh... Oh! He was identified as Kohei Jonochi, uh, Jonochi, 32, a teacher at Komagata High. He was found in the school's courtyard. That is fuck! Cause of death appears to be external trauma from a fall or a heavy blow. The impact crushed his arms and legs. Ah! Don't like that! Since he was found in the middle of cor uh, of courtyard. <laughs> uh, okay. He couldn't have <laughs> fallen from the gymnasium or the main building. <clears throat> so he was pushed and then moved. It's at courtyard. At the... Of a... <clears throat> a teacher dying at school. I just, think, I just think it's Ario just losing his ability <laughs> to speak every time he's, he has to name off these causes of death. Well, this one would have to be... Fool's Procession. Yeah, yeah. Right! It's where the Fool's Procession is supposed to be. It's too big of a coincidence. We can't rule out the possibility that this death was also the work of a curse. I see. Either way, it seems all three victims can be tied to the Seven Mysteries. There's probably a curse bear at the center of it all pulling the strings. Oh, that's the string pulling curse. <laughs> oh, jeez, no. <clears throat> no, no. But you've got a point. All these strange deaths do point in one direction. That's right. 
And Hajime's case wasn't all that different either. He also died of mysterious causes in a place connected to the Seven Mysteries. Problem is that the timing doesn't match up. He died before the curses were activated. Hmm, heart attack? Could he have been hit by a different curse? One that didn't have anything to do with the Seven Mysteries? Oh, great. Hmm, that's a thought, but... <clears throat> if that were the case, we'd be dealing with a powerful practitioner. One who could pull off a curse like that without using a cursed stone. There aren't many people in this day and age who could do something like that. Oh, really? I see. I don't know too much about that stuff. I'd be more surprised if you did. Hi. <laughs> well, looking at these deaths, it seems like many of the curse bearers acted last night. Hi, boss. See, I just love it when, Hi, when they're boss. just standing there. I could just imagine, hello. We can't rule out that there were more killings from which the bodies haven't been found. Yikes! I hadn't thought of that. But there is one silver lining. Judging by my own curse stone, it seems that the curses can't be activated while the sun's out. Oh, that's great news! Why don't you try it? <laughs> uh, oh. No, it looks like it didn't- Blah! So basically, we're safe during the daytime. Exactly. It's also likely why Nejima gave us till dusk. Ah, he must have known the curse stones couldn't be used during the day. Either way, we've got till nightfall to settle this. It's time we flushed out the other curse bearers. Hell yeah! Aye aye, boss! Let's do this. After we talk about something else. At the moment, we only know the identity of four curse bearers, you included. So we gotta know who we're looking after before we can go after them. Uh, Yutaro Na Namigaki had the foot washing mansion, and Hideki Araishi had the ever burning lantern. We've got both of their curse stones. And then there's Nejima, who claims he has the one sided reed. Yeah, that about sums it up. Yay, summed up. We'd better figure out who the remaining five are quick. How should we go about looking for them? There's no point in searching blindly without a lead. Let's focus on other things for now. Tracking down Nejima may lead us to the other curse bearers, too. Either way, he should be our top priority. He could do something- he do some real damage if we don't get him. I also want to look a little more into Yoshimi. I got a feeling there's some connection there. Aye aye, boss. Sounds like we've got our work cut out for us. So, uh, refresh my memory. Have we met the gal that got crushed? No. Okay. I asked around Sumida's Community Safety Bureau where Yoshimi was stationed. It seemed like he was investigating the apparent suicide of a girl named Michio Shiraishi. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. I heard about that. He was trying to determine whether it really was a suicide. Looking into the height of the building, the force of the impact, her wounds, all that. He must have suspected some kind of foul play because he ordered a full investigation. But it had already been deemed a suicide and his superiors told him not to go stirring things up. Oh, why? They hiding something? What was the evidence? Well, according to the report I found on, on his desk last, last night written on a napkin, the body was found at the foot of a building a ways away from the road. There was no evidence of vehicular collision, so it was ruled a suicide, but... But? He thought there was more to it? Yes. A truck or other flat-faced vehicle traveling at high speeds could have inflicted similar damage. In other words, sometimes a traffic accident can look an awful lot like a fall. So there is a chance that it wasn't a suicide. Interesting. But what a terrible way to go. Yeah, no shit. There were no brake marks on the road, meaning it could have been a hit-and-run. God! The vehicle would have hit her without slowing down at all. Jesus. This is turning into quite the grisly case. Yeah. This was a maniac in the truck. Yeah, but, but the vehicle couldn't have come out from a collision like that unscathed. Exactly. So I asked the traffic bureau to keep an eye out for any vehicles with frontal damage and blood marks. But I haven't heard anything back from them yet. I don't think they're looking very hard. Yeah, we'll check every car in the whole city! Pfft, gotcha, bro! <laughs> so we've got no proof. That said, if it were a traffic accident rather than a suicide, it's possible that someone silenced Yoshimi because he was on the verge of discovering the truth. That's true. You think the driver is the one who did him in? Not quite. 
Yoshimi had already talked to forensics in the traffic bro, right? His death wouldn't have covered things up. You're right on that. Even if the suicide was a cover-up for a hit-and-run, it doesn't seem like enough reason to kill a cop. <laughs> oh, that's right! Unrelated, but I got something else, too. I managed to get a hold of Michio Shiraishi's address. Yoshimi went there a bunch over the course of his investigation. Might be a good idea for us to drop by, too. Good thinking. Hopefully that'll give us some more leads. All right. Let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> talking! Ask talking, me something else! How I love Ask me talking. something else! Da, 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 Remember da, 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 the girl Yoshimi met with the other- the, with the day he died? The one Hitomi Okuda? They're just gossiping now. Oh, stop! Community safety didn't have any contact information for her on uh, hand! Uh-huh, uh -huh. Not even an address? Oh, well, they had her parents' information, but when I called, they said they hadn't heard from her in a month! <sighs> Looks lots of no. family issues from the sound of it. They even said they didn't want anything to do with her anymore. Oh, oh That said, she still goes that. to school once in a while, so we might be able to find her there. Oh, not sure we really have time for a stakeout right now, but she could be a key witness. Can't we just have community safety track her down for us? Oh my god, we can ask, but it might be tricky to get it done today. For starters, Komagata High School is closed for uh, today. <laughs> uh, because of the teacher that died? Uh, no, because it's a holiday. Uh, what were you thinking of? Uh, uh, that's right. It's all right, but if it's not something we can do today, we might have to figure. We might have to forget about it. Let's move on then. The high school has a really strict ah. firing policy. <laughs> you get fired, you get pushed off the building. No! <laughs> I got some information about Yoshimi's fiance from the community safety. Her name is Mayu Chozawa, 27 years old. She works as a beautician in the area. Look, I even managed to get a picture of her. She sure is a beauty. Show me the Gyaru. But... Oh boy, here it comes. But what? She died. Community safety hasn't been able to contact her since Yoshimi died. Not by phone or at her house. In other words, no response. Dead. Silence. There it is. Can't things just be easy for once? <laughs> It's definitely starting to look suspect. Grab a passion, perhaps? Uh, it is fairly common for people to be killed by a lover or a spouse. But Yoshimi was well-liked, and they'd been together for over ten years. You never know. Things could be different behind closed doors. I guess so. Locked her in the bathroom. But we'll have to consider the opposite scenario, too. It could be that the same person who was out for Yoshimi is after his fiance as well. She could be in danger. Ooh, you're right. Either way, she's important to the case. HQ is, uh, already has people looking for her. We'll know as soon as she's found. Ask me something else, boss! It's alright, now about the guy who's gonna kill everybody at that sunset. Yeah! HQ has mobilized a search unit for Nijima. But so far, we haven't received any word. It oh, wait. Hey, look, word. Guessing he wasn't at home or at work. About that. Apparently he vacated his last known address a week ago. Go what's, figure. Va what's vacated mean? Hold on, I hope I get a note about what vacated means. Are you serious? So we have no idea where he lives. It gets worse. I checked in with the factory he was working at. They told me he was only there for a month before he quit. Hold on a second. You're telling me nobody caught that? Well, I had the same thought, so I spoke to his probation officer. Turns out he'd been doing house visits and interviews, but never bothered checking on his workplace. He also said he lost track of Nejima when he moved to a new place. Wow. Jeez, that's just sloppy. Very. I've heard that they've given, uh, they're giving parole to just about anybody, uh, anyone these days. They're running out of room in the prisons. Wow, when hell fills up, the dead shall walk. Which also means there aren't enough probation officers to go around. Dude's probably overworked. So Nejima got to fuck up. <coughs> so Nejima got to it's... fuck about unsupervised. God damn it. So Nejima got to fuck. Got to fuck. He uh... cannot procreate. That asshole is annoyingly good at faking remorse than he is at faking orgasms. Or insanity. Whatever the situation calls for. Back when I arrested him all those years ago, just talking to him left a bad taste in my mouth. It tasted like black licorice. He's probably hiding under a false name, which will make him hard to track him down. 
That explained why you so brazenly made contact. That asshole. He's mocking us. Well, for now, the paperwork to circulate his name and mugshot is being filed. It's gonna take way too long. We only have until dusk. So let's talk some more! <laughs> you hear Nejima in the background? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Speaking of Nejima... Nah, 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 nah. Oh. Yeah? Did you manage to reach your daughter? It'd be best to put her into protective custody as soon as possible. Uh, not yet. I can't reach her. They called, but she's not picking up. Wasn't home when they went to the house, either. I can't wait to find out she's the airhead and she's a curse bearer. That's not good. Does that mean she never came home? Why would you don't want to try to wait to her? Shut up! I don't have her contact info, all right? Damn, she really doesn't trust you, huh? Either way, I told her mother that it was an emergency, <laughs> and that we'd send an officer to find her and get her to safety. <laughs> wow, your daughter really- She was real when I walked away, <laughs> but I got her through a gooey! I would love it if Ario didn't know boundaries. She's like, wow, your daughter really fucking hates you, boss. Um, <laughs> I guess that explains why you got divorced. But if you, her former father, can't find her, how the hell did Nijima do it? Former, hey. That cuts deep. Yeah, why did you say that? Yikes, sorry, it just kinda slipped out. Anyway, I suspect it has something to do with his curse, Echo. Back on topic already, huh? He said his curse could kill a lot of people in a short time. It may even allow him to act from a distance. I see. The one-sided reed. What was that story about again? Soon I go by the man stalking a woman, he goes inside and chops her up. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. One of the more gruesome of the uh -oh. seven mysteries. Uh oh. <laughs> Think he's gonna do that? Uh oh. As for Nejiba's whereabouts, all we can do is throw more people at it till we find something. I'll check in with HQ frequently to see if they've got any updates. And that's about it. We've done enough dialogue. Shall we continue uh, continue our investigation? We should go. Uh, we could go to Kamigata High to look into Hitomi Okuda, or if Michio Shiraishi's house to find more out about her. Where All do you right. think we should go, friend? Oh, well, we're gonna move. So that ends the chapter. No way. Oh yeah, it does. That was a talking, sorting things out kind of chapter, and we've unlocked Hare oh, Shigema's new chapter. Boy. Life can be tough, and Tsutsumi's next chapter. Fancy, fancy sushi, sushi. which is where we're going next. All right, fancy sushi time. With dusk fast approaching. They have no time to waste. With that in mind, Tsutsumi and Ario just direct their investigation toward Kamagata High School and the Shiraishi residence. Hey, boss, have you ever had good sushi? It's really good. I mean, they get the fatty tuna and everything, and it's so delicious. Vegetarian. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'll get you an egg roll then. Man, this is traveling music. Listen to this. Sure it is. Yeah. I went out to the high school to talk to some high schoolers to see if they knew anything about the murder. Turns out they screamed and started crying as soon as I showed my face. Then I had my younger, more handsome detective partner show up and ask questions. They got more of the same. Some of them even carried pepper spray. <laughs> it was then we decided not to show up at that school. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It was then we decided <laughs> probably not important. Classes are suspended for the day, so the students are just kind of wandering around aimlessly. Go home! Was there no train at 9 o'clock in the morning? This place isn't only connected to the case because the students were under Yoshimi's jurisdiction. It's also the site of the Fool's Procession, and of course, where that teacher was killed. Walking exposition dub, aren't you, Ariel? Exposition, 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 exposition. Hey, can we find some clues, exposition? Alright, let's look around here. Gymnasium! Wow, that sure is a gymnasium. It's a gym. It's also a polling place and an evac center. A lot of buildings around here are still made of wood, but this place looks safe and sturdy. You know, except for the couple murders that have happened recently. The news of the dead teacher has also attracted a fair share of rubberneckers. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that term in any video game ever. That is like an old kind of 70s term, I'd say. Uh, it, seriously, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's people who stop and look at something. Like, like you're driving by, you see like a car accident, and, and you, you go, oh. you're like, huh? Yeah, you turn and look at it. That's that's amazing. Like 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 think Tex Av Tex Avery, you know? Like yeah, you, your your head stays in one oh, place, yeah. but you keep going, and you're uh, rubberneck. Hey, it's rubber. I get it. I get it. It's amazing. Uh, let's talk to the person in charge later. 
there's not a whole lot we can do here, but we gotta we gotta do everything here. Wait, did they break out the trumpets for this? This is definitely investigation music. Sure it is. Maybe get a uh, skronking sax here later. Yeah. Oh, delinquency. Oh no. Got a bunch of Yankees running around. You're right down about those yet those uh, Yankees, those those chimpira, yeah. <laughs> Talk to me, boss. Oh, I saw something on my shirt. Don't tell me I stink. You stink. <laughs> no. All oh, right. Spe <laughs> speaking of schools, exposition. What is it? You said paranormal affairs can't help us right now. So why don't we get that psychic high schooler you mentioned to help us out? A lot of people involved in the case lead back to this school anyway, so it might make things easier to have them with us. For a guy who questioned me on the, le on the legality of working with them, you sure seem eager to exploit underage labor. They'll work for free! Hey, who said anything about exploiting them? I just want to give our young experts the opportunity to shine! They'll work in exposure. When'd you become such a smooth talker? Oh, shit. Sorry. Oh, I see. <laughs> you want to scope my dialogue? Uh, I wonder if there's anyone who could help us out here. Well, what if they showed up right now? You should talk to be a good boy. Um, I have to take the tie. Just gotta make sure we check everything. I think he still has stuff to say. Thank you. I wonder if there's anyone. Nope. Yeah, help us scout the area. Uh, or maybe, maybe the do a sign think. of the school. Oh, yeah, I think. School and yet, I doubt this will be that simple. That'll be that simple. Uh, are you waiting for a cue? Uh, sort of. Just gotta make sure we check everything here. The surroundings, we got that. Uh, maybe the road? Wonder if there's anyone here who could help us. Uh, looks like we got everything. You may be right. Yeah, I don't see anything else because we got repeating dialogue and everything else. Yeah, everything's all checked out, so. Cool, let's go. All right, let's move to Mich to Michio Shiraishi's place then. All right, get some good sushi for my vegetarian boss. <laughs> Make vegetarian sushi. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. I just love the idea. You go out for the good stuff, and then he's just like, "Oh, sorry, I can't have that. No sea urchin for me." Seems like Michio's house is at the end of the road. We don't want to intimidate them, so maybe I should go alone. Was that a diss at you? <laughs> I mean, I do kind of look. That's kind of funny. All right, I'll go check the house. Holy shit! The oh, okay. Uh, maybe check the surroundings? The oh, hi. Oh, you're back. Oh, you're back. Oh, hi, I'm back. No luck, boy. No one home? Doesn't look like it. I knocked for a while, but nobody came to the door. I glanced in the windows, but there was no sign of activity inside either. I saw about three newspapers stuffed into their mailbox. So, three days? No, they were quarterly review magazines. They haven't been here for like nine months. Oh my god. <laughs> Please don't look at my butt. Barry looks kind of disappointed. <laughs> These houses are really crammed together in the narrow. Oop. Strangers like us would definitely stand out. It really feels like old Tokyo. I was there for that. Well, we're about done here. I mean, she's not home and no one's really at the high school for us to talk to, so I guess we're just gonna wait around for a little while. Okay. Okay. That's cool. So to close this out today, we're gonna go check out Harai Shigima's new story. Uh... Life can be tough. Oh, preach. Believe me, life can be tough. Throughout the night, Richter continues to gather information about the Cursed Stones while Hadaway lies awake until dawn, preoccupied by the prospect of bringing her lost child back to life. Oh my god, she was, like, wide-eyed the entire night? That's some desperation right there. That's some agony right there. That's, yes, that's, 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 that's really... deep agony. Deep hurting. Deep hurting. Curse bear- Curse? Can you just shut up? I'm trying to sleep. Morning, ma'am. How you feeling? Ma'am, I'm feeling fine. I hope we can make good progress today. How is your curse stone looking? Deadly. I haven't felt anything from it since sunrise. Interesting. It's possible that its powers can only be unleashed at night, then. 
That aside, why are you so late this morning? There are unfortunately some things that can't be investigated while the world slumbers. But I did get some research done in what limited time I had. Very well. Let's talk. All right. Talk to me, Richter Kai. More talky. Here we go. By the way, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. And that's why we're here. Our current plan is to steal a curse stone that's already absorbed soul dregs, but... I'm wondering if it would suffice to not steal, but instead negotiate with a curse bearer and have them use the right for our purposes. Oh. I mean, I suppose that would accomplish the same, but do you think it's possible? So long as we offer compensation, it may prove much easier than you'd expect. Compensation... Cash, for instance. That wouldn't be off the table for a family as rich as the Shigimas, would it? Of course. Why, any amount would be fine if it'd get the job done. Thirteen trillion dollars. Money is no object. I won't let monetary matters lead me to regrets the way it did back with the ransom. <sighs> okay, with that option on the table, let's figure out our strategy. Just throw money at the curse <laughs> bearer! <laughs> money! Money! Ah. Give me your curse stone, please! Do you have a curse bearer with whom we can negotiate in mind? Not yet. Surprisingly, it seems the other curse bearers haven't had been that proactive about collecting soul dregs. Did you see the news this morning? No, I haven't. Overnight, three mysterious deaths are reported in this area. They've yet to announce the identities of the bodies found, but they've been nicknamed the Hanjo Serial Killings. It's garnered quite some attention on the streets. Oh my. Only three? <laughs> Only three? Whoa! That's what I thought. Even if the victims were curse bearers, just one or two wouldn't be enough soul dregs. And for what those cursed stones are capable of, a mere three victims seems a little on the low side. With this little act with this little activity all throughout the night, the curse bearers must be a cautious bunch. What's holding them back? Are we not all after the power of resurrection? Maybe it's like some douchebag cop that's going around taking all their fun. Hey. It's like, no, okay. I'll take that. No. Wow. Hey, yeah, Dad no. just took my my curse stone. Jeez. Mom took my game. Dad took my curse stone. <laughs> There may still be some undiscovered victims, but it doesn't seem like anyone has gathered enough soul dregs yet. We might have to set up some bait to spur them into action. Oh, I've done this before. A, a wad of cash underneath a box. Works every time. Uh, well, Just pull the string and you catch them. It's like a rabbit. Uh, the wad might be... Uh... And then we offer them in the deal. So about the curse bears... So let's kidnap them, right? <laughs> None of the curse bearers seem very proactive. I wonder if this situation could be what the mastermind who kicked it all off intended. Wow, I just realized that could actually work. You kidnap them, tie them to a chair, and put a lighter in their rope, and just like so. <laughs> now, now that's an interesting story or theory. Excuse me. You think there'd be uh, there's someone behind this all? You mentioned hearing an agonized voice telling you to kill when you first obtain the curse stone. That doesn't sound like coincidence to me. Someone agitated the curses in this area on purpose, and they are likely after the writ the right of resurrection as well. So you're thinking this person is not one of the curse bearers? You've got a sharp mind, ma'am. A third party. Though it might seem obvious for the mastermind to become a curse bearer and collect soul dregs if they were after the right. This would be very risky, since as a curse bearer, they themselves would be a target. So it'd actually be more convenient for them if the curse bearers move less aggressively. That's right. But despite that, they've been inciting the curse bearers to commit murders. Why? Let's consider this. What if the Mastermind isn't trying to collect soul dragons themselves? You mean their intention was also to steal the souls while the other curse bearers compete with each other from the start? Sitting back and observing from the sidelines is the safer course of action. Yeah. Which is why I figured it'd be best for us to attempt the same strategy. So, how should we do it? There's still reason to suspect the Mastermind could be a curse bearer themselves. To be honest, I want to keep my distance from whoever it is. There's no telling what kind of power they might possess. Whether our aim is to negotiate or steal, we'll have to outpace the Mastermind in making contact with the other curse bearers. How do you suppose we do so? I got a gun! <laughs> At this point, all we can do is search. I got a gun, I got handcuffs, what else do we need? Money? You got it! If there's a Mastermind inciting the curse bearers to collect soul dregs, can we be sure there even is a Rite of Resurrection? 
good question. The right could be nothing but a myth fabricated to spur the Coast Bellows into action. Oh, that extra W in fabricated just sends me. <laughs> Seeing it might be for naught. Do you want to give up, ma'am? <gasps> never. Understood. After all, we'll never know the truth unless we see it for ourselves. God, that face. But we'll do it without using the curses ourselves. Anyway, about those curse bearers. By the way, I met a few people who seemed like potential curse bearers last night. I did some investigating into all of them, but I only managed to get detailed information on two. You're quick. I suppose that's to be expected from an investigator extraordinaire. Oh, shucks. I appreciate the flattery. <laughs> Anime pose. Hooah. Chuny built bullshit in the 70s. Kind of Hell yeah. First there is Ayame Tono, the girl we talked to before, though she isn't the curse bearer herself. She's a student attending T University of A. She's currently living alone in an apartment near MP. Oh. Even determined- Oh. Have you even- Uh, you even determined her address? You're not one to be under underestimated, Mr. Investigator Extraordinaire. I called every single university with ukiyo-e in the curriculum, pretending to be her parent. I went around to check on her place on the way here. It doesn't seem like she returned home last night. I'm worried she might have run into some trouble. Uh-oh. Didn't you attempt to follow her last night? I'm embarrassed to say, but I couldn't. She shook me. <laughs> I couldn't keep track of her. <laughs> yeah, she... Arms on his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> And here I thought you were an investigator extraordinaire. I take back my compliments to wound you. I'd like to learn more about her, but it would take some time. She is planning to steal the curse stones, just like us. It's best we act carefully around her. Anyway, about those about curse bearers. Curse <laughs> Next is the tall man who was dressed in black. I met him near Kinshi Cho. He stood out with the way he dressed. I managed to get some good information from him. Impressive. What can I say? Investigator extraordinaire. He works at the secretary to Hihaku Soaps' chairwoman. I believe his name is Takumi y Yumioka. The Hihaku Soaps headquarters and factories are both located in Hanjo, correct? Yes. They've been here for a while, but it's only in the past ten years that the company has shown significant growth. I remember seeing the chairwoman on the news a few years back. She seems to be very shrewd. With the increase in sales, I assume she'd want her factories and running at full capacity. But with the harsh restrictions against industrial waste, a lot of factories with older equipment have been to sh had, be had be to shut down. Ooh, that's a typo. Had to shut down. Had, yep, had to be shut down, so it's just transposed. Had, had, it's fine. Had be to shut down. Had be to shut down. That's right. Had to be even ten years ago. The, there were many complaints about chemical plants dumping waste into the river. Most companies back then were more concerned with making a profit than protecting the environment. I wonder what a man working for such a company would have been up to in the middle of the night. <laughs> On the way here, I stopped by the company's headquarters, but they hadn't. They had started for the day. I should have better luck later. Let's hope you will. More later stuff. Do this later. We'll, have, we'll get more later. Uh, Do more later. Perhaps they're interested in seeing if the right would be beneficial for their product research into beauty and skincare. Ha! Now that's an interesting thought. So about those curse bearers. Yeah, about those curse bearers. We ran into one more suspicious young man last night. This one seemed to be out collecting soul dregs, right? Ooh. Indeed, I couldn't get a good look at him though, and I couldn't gather enough intel to properly identify him. Well, that's a shame. But I can make an educated guess. <gasps> oh? You know that researcher who discovered the ancient text on the Rite of Resurrection? The one that lives near here? His name is Hideki Araishi, and the man I met was very similar in stature. Ooh, oh my. Even he is involved? How awfully suspect. Considering his background, couldn't he be the one who initiated the whole affair? I think it's possible, yes. Mastermind? Question mark? Which is why I decided to refrain from making contact with him for the time being. Safety first. Understandable. Of course, I want to learn more, but this isn't the right time to focus on him. So about those curse bearers... <laughs> Can we talk about my son at any, any time, any point? I prefer to ascertain who else is a curse bearer. First, I'll return to the Hihaku Soaps to see that man in black. 
Their headquarters are down are down on South Wadigasui Street. You know, I, I'm just imagining we're, we're chit chatting right here, and then we hear Roar! it's like, oh my god, it's a curse bear. <laughs> <laughs> I learned something new about the criminal involved with the kidnapping. It concerns the serial killings. There was a body found at Komagata High School. <gasps> person was identified as a school teacher. His name was Kohei Jonochi. <gasps> mm. Mm. <laughs> Do you think he was a curse bearer? Not sure. It's possible. But regardless, this means the two people who knew the truth about the kidnapping are both dead. Hmm. Just when we were getting somewhere. It isn't enough to make me give up, of course. Still, we don't know anything about Michio Shirai's residence. It'd be wise to pay a visit. Understood. So anyway... What about those ooh. serial killings... Okay, this is more interesting. Here in we go. In addition to the three victims associated with the Honjo serial killings, there's Michio Shiraishi, who, was reported com who reportedly committed suicide, and the police officer who died at the former Yasuda Gardens. Strange deaths continue occurring like so. They're bound to inspire strange rumors. What, like a rite of resurrection actually working? Oh, that's a, come But on. those last two have nothing to do with the seven mysteries, no. It's true. Both occurred a week before this accursed situation began. Still, it cannot be ruled out. It's possible mm. that the Mastermind was involved even with those killings. How? I don't know, they just were. <laughs> what if they were preliminary steps to awakening the seven mysteries' curses? Can we really Ooh. assume they are unrelated just because the timing doesn't match up? Or rather, the police officer's death is so baffling that it'd be easier if it were connected to the cur to these curses. The victim wasn't the type to be caught off guard easily. You seem to know a lot about this. I suppose we weren't strangers. My personal feelings might be wrapped up in this too. I see. If you were to investigate this matter more, you might get a lead on the Mastermind. You're right. If we wish to focus on the Mastermind's identity, this would be a fine starting point. Oh, so this is how a bunch of the stories interconnect. We might even discover more deaths related to the curses on the way. We should pay attention to today's news. Oh, well, that's all I got to report. Should we continue with our investigation? Yes! What do you want to do? If you still can't use the curse stone, taking a walk should be a fine place to start. Watch the news. Watch the news. Right. Let's go together. I want to see what's going on for myself. In that case, I'll trust you to decide on where we should go, ma'am. Alright, let's go! Let's go to the television. Time oh. to investigate things! Where do we go? We're gonna uh, go to a uh, 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 South Wadi Gasui. Actually, no, we're going to Midori Cho Park! <laughs> Might as well. Midori Cho to There's a kid in the background. That's kinda cool. We're here. This is Midori Cho Park. Wow, thank you, tour guide. Ayami Tona lives around here. She wasn't in her apartment when I dropped by this morning. I wonder if it's worth checking again. Hmm, about that belt buckle you have on. It won't get much done standing around here. Why don't I go and check out Ayami's apartment? Hmm, you don't mean to speak with her, do you? No, I'd prefer to get an idea of what she's been up to. I'd like to see whether she's been home or not, just to potentially get a trace on her movements. Then, be my guest. Okay, guy yeah, shouldn't be long. Sometime later... I'm back, ma'am. So, nothing. I'm afraid so. She still hasn't returned. However... However... I found a nickel. <gasps> I noticed a few people who seem to be related to the police force keep wa uh, keeping watch in the area. I don't know if they got eyes on her apartment, but they do appear to be watching the building it's in. Interesting. You've got a sharp eye to have noticed them despite being so covert. What, a, what can I say? It's part of the job. However, it, it meant I had to refrain from knocking on her door or looking through her windows. I wasn't able to check her electric meter or mailbox either, unfortunately. I never considered that! That's such a nice detail! The meter? Uh, the meter, the mailbox, is, yeah. most people just, you know, check inside. Investigator extraordinaire! Yeah, you were planning to go that far? That's so cool! This place is connected with the story of the Taiko of Tsugaru. Not only that, Katsushika Hokusai's uh, home uh, was cameraman? also in this area. Ca cameraman? That might be why anime chose to live here. My, my anime chose to live here. <laughs> 
Alright, what else we got around here? Anything? We won't make much progress sticking around here. Alright, looks like we yeah, have let's everything. Piss off. Alright. Didn't don't need to be that harsh. I mean we just wanted to check around. No problem with that. Now to go to South Water Gasui Street. Warigesui. Five syllables. That's nuts. The Hihaku Soaps headquarters are on the other side of of South Warigesui Street. They were closed when I visited this morning, but it appears things are up and running now. Oh, good. I think a small soap making company could grow so much in such a short time. They have factories and warehouses throughout the area now. You can see why director and now chairwoman Natsue Yamamori is called the Queen. All right, I know it's an old joke, but I would love to see Investigator Extraordinaire walk into uh, walk into the soaps area and just say, "Who wants to talk about murders?" You mentioned that Takumi works as her secretary. That's correct. Do you think it's possible he's acting on her orders? Ooh. That's exactly my thinking. A curse bearer with both money and power could certainly look at resurrection as their next prize. Negotiating with a person of that stature may prove difficult. But not impossible. Business is up and running. I can see people inside the reception area. Cool. Alright, let's go. First, I need to confirm whether Takumi is the man I ran into last night. Then I'll be able to determine if he is a curse bearer. It'd be better if I go inside the headquarters alone. You should walk around, visit a cafe for some tea, perhaps. Are you trying to get rid of me? I'm gonna go in. It may be a while, so feel fine. So, f feel to find somewhere to <laughs> kill time. F feel free to find somewhere to kill time. Hmm. Okay, good luck in there. After some time passes... I'm off to go factory. Sorry to keep waiting. Please don't. That's gonna mess with me. How did it go? I'll fast forward to the, to the conclusion. I met with Takumi. <gasps> There's no doubt. He's the same man I saw last night. Oh. But it doesn't seem like he's a curse bearer. Oh, that's good. Hmm. But that doesn't mean he has no connections to the recent curses. <laughs> he knew about the seven mysteries! He even guessed we have a curse stone of our own! Oh, that's bad. Excuse me? Yikes. I tried to approach Takumi about a fallen item after I ran into him last night, however. You said your name was Richter, correct? I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. I'm hoping you would hand over the curse stone in your possession. Curse stone? What are you on about? There's no need to play dumb with me. In fact, there's no time for it. I had all the same reason you did to think you were a curse bearer last night. And your arrival here only confirms it. You are a curse bearer, no? Uh... You're right. We lack time. I'll confess. I am a curse bearer. I possess the curse stone of the haunting clappers. I'm glad to hear the truth. Finally, this conversation is worthwhile. It is a dangerous item you hold. Give it to me. My company will take the responsibility to dispose of it. I didn't know the soap business specialized in scrubbing curses clean. It is the prerogative of Miss Yamamori. Ooh. Is that so? Oh. Assuming you've obtained the curse, you'd understand the power it involves, no? Miss Yamamori possesses supernatural powers akin to those of a god. <laughs> what? She also has a deep love for this land, having transformed it from the pile of dirt it once was to the home of our headquarters. She cannot stomach the fact that it is now the sight of these curses run rampant. So you're telling me the Queen of, Hik of Hihaku is a real-life witch? She's the Queen of Soap. She wouldn't appreciate being called that, mind you. God of Soap, excuse me. She's a source. Uh, there's a sorcerer by the name of Suigen Gamyodo who gallantly worked behind the scenes, exercising spirits and the like. Go on. That being so, there have, on there have already been instances of the dead coming back to life. Do you understand the urgency of this matter? These are curses we're speaking of, tools of which are used by wicked beings to possess people. The Rite of Resurrection is nothing but a fabrication meant to seduce the curse bearers into unspeakable action. Oh boy. If you truly understand what I'm talking about, you must hand over that curse stone at once. Very interesting. With that said, just how many curse stones have you acquired so far? If what you tell me is true, surely the company would have had would have launched a large scale of search by now. Mm. You haven't gotten a single one, do you? 
we have six. Whoa, that's a lie. <laughs> six, whoa, I can rest at ease then. And here I thought I was at risk of being cursed. It seems we are on the same page. If that is the case, you should hand you over your curse stone immediately. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's not actually in my possession at the moment. Considering its importance, I've been keeping it in hiding. Really now? Then I'll accompany you where you while you retreat. I'm sorry, but I've got something important to attend to, but I promise I'll return with it later. Mm hmm, very well. Then you won't refuse to provide your address and telephone number, I presume. How prudent of you, I'll oblige. Yeah, good idea. Yikes. And that's how it went. So, seven mysteries, nine curse stones? There could be like 15, or even like 30. Okay, so it's not limited to a, a hard nine or seven. See, seven is not a number, it's, it's, it's a marketing ploy. Oh, seven is a nice number. It is a nice number. Seven Dragon Balls, seven Chaos Emeralds, seven Cities of Gold. Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Legend of the Seven Stars, you know, seven's good. It's, it's seven, lucky number seven. Yeah, so they aren't after the right after all. I wouldn't be so quick to trust him. Oh? I believe we're dealing with a master in deception. He may well have made up a story to convince us to part ways with our stone. <laughs> yeah, he's got a really good poker face. I think he was lying about having procured six curse stones as well. Like, really? Six? That's excessive. Well, now I feel gullible. Temp the company is plotting something. I wonder what they mean to do with the curse stones. You seem rather desperate to get a hold of ours, despite us not having collected any soul drags. Perhaps the people at Hihaku are the masterminds behind the curses being unleashed. Because the chairwoman's a witch with a capital B? I wonder about that too. If she really were that powerful, would her secretary have divulged that information so casually? Yeah! Takami was either making it up as he went, or... Or? Or he's trying to spread a rumor. <gasps> For what purpose would he do that? Recently, people have been caught up about the occult more than ever before. Word spreads that Hihaku's chairwoman had godlike powers. More sales. She could very well benefit socially and politically from that mystique. Huh? That's unsettling. It's also very smart. I mean, people are gullible, even more these days. By the way, there is one more thing of interest I heard while in the company's reception lobby. And what's that? People were discussing whether one of the bodies found this morning was that of a Hihaku employee. <gasps> oh shit! Yeah, that actually connects, really? Shogo! Yeah! So long as the officials haven't revealed the identity, it all amounts to no more than speculation, though. Despite that, I have reason to believe Hihaku Soaps is deeply involved with the Seven Mysteries. At the very least, I can assure you I've gathered that much. The more we know, the better our, ne our negotiations will go. Information. Information. We should avoid Hihaku for the time being. It'll be a pain if I have to deal with Takumi again. <laughs> Alright, well, next area. The high school. Let's see what's going on up there. Komagata. Is there anything more here? Okay. Komagata High School. Komagata High School. Hey, kids. Have you heard anything about curses lately? Yeah! Here we are at Ground Zero. Komagata High School. I guess it's logical that the police got this place shut down. Teacher's body was found here, after all. It's as if the students have nowhere to go now that the school's cur uh, closed. <laughs> the school's cur cursed. It's cursed. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> News has attracted a bunch of curious onlookers, eh? It works in our favor. The more people around, the better we can blend in. Oh yeah. He appears to be wary of those police officers. Maybe the police really do have something against private investigators, just like in those detective novels. So looking over here... I, I see nothing. Eh? <laughs> there is nothing over here. Seems the officers are still inspecting the scene. Entry has been strictly prohibited. 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 Uh, does Richter have anything else to say? He probably does. Think, like, look, look at his beautiful face. This place is just said to be connected with the, sto with the story of the Fool's Procession! I wouldn't be surprised if a curse bearer decided to turn up. <laughs> However, I need to find out that that teacher was one or not. I expect the police to be baffled since they don't know about the curses. I can ask around and see what the students have to say. Oh, a choice. All right, they'll go ask the students about Michio. I assume if you do the other option, it's just like, eh, never mind. Okay, then dead end. Until you tell them to go do so. I'm back, ma'am. So, what did you learn? 
that school kids sure love a good rumor. Yay! I was practically drowning in stories about Mr. Jonoji and Michio, most of which seemed dubious at best. Not surprising. Most of what I heard was hardly worth a second thought. But there was one story that caught my attention. <gasps> oh, oh! Some believe that Michio was the one who killed Mr. D Mr. Jonoji. What? Really? Story. The story's got two pieces of evidence to back it up. One of them wasn't news to me. Apparently, he's been mumbling that Michio was going to kill him for some days now. A fellow teacher overheard his mumbling and told the students. And then it spread like wildfire, I suppose. Rumors that juicy don't stay a secret for long. As for the other piece of evidence, oh, a pigtailed girl in her school uniform was seen around school yeah. late last night. Go on. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> Although numerous people claim to have seen the girl, not one of them saw her face. Some are proposing it was Michio brought back to life, or that it was her vengeful spirit. But it's not like Michio's the only high school girl to wear pigtails. The rumors might have been made up just to fan the flames. Hmm. But if it were true, I'd want to get a hold of her in order to hear her side of the kidnapping. If she's alive, that'd be ideal. There's still one more thing I should mention. I discovered where Michio lived. A student had a list of student addresses on hand. That's an amazing find. Yeah, seriously. I believe all the students actually have a copy of said list. Why? It truly worries me how easy it was to obtain what to the big competition information. Thank you, Richter. Imagine what would happen if that information got into the wrong hands. Like of a serial killer janitor. Yeah, like, <laughs> we had to pause for that. Hmm, well, so far it hasn't, no? <laughs> uh, sure, let's hope it stays that way. In the meantime, it's now possible for us to visit Michioshi Raisi's house. Why don't we go there now? Anything else we should do here? Uh, a and... new girl showed up behind Richter, but I don't think that has anything to... Let's exhaust everything. Anything to say there, lover boy? Imagine students are uneasy about learning the murder, maybe they want to stay home, and da 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 da. Police are probably too wrapped up, it's probably the case of uh, mental, mental health. health. Yes, I can yes, see talk that. Talk, yes, good, right. talk, 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 okay, we got it. Uh, what's this about? Uh, I expect criminals to grow more cunning as time passes. There may be times where the authorities can't keep up. That's where outlaws such as myself come in. See, this is why we love the ability to go back and read, just in case something slightly changes. Yes. Okay, there we go. Alright! Now we can move over to Michio Shiraishi's place. This should be good. This should be good. Yep, I knew this was the place. All right. How did it go? I went to visit Michio Shiraishi's family home, however, no one seemed to be there. I got no answer at the door and all the lights were out. It seems to have been empty for a while now. There was a stack of newspapers out front. Hmm. Social con social connections run deep in working class areas like this place, so I decided to talk to the locals. Met a few nice old ladies who were kind enough to give me the scoop. Turns out the Shiraishi's reputation really went down the dumps this past year. What? Is that so? I'll give you the quick summary. They moved here about three years ago. Their previous residence was in a better part of town. Michio's father died in a car accident, leaving behind just the two of them. Michio's mom, Toshiko, now a single mother, relocated here. At first, they got along with the neighbors, many of which were in similar situations, helping and being helped in turn. So far, so good. What happened? Well, as I said, the reputation began to go downhill about a year ago. The man recognized as Toshiko's common-law husband had moved into the household. His name was apparently Kankichiro Iwai. Neighborhood mm. gossip is something else. Somehow everyone knew his name. So, what of this EY character? He was apparently a vulgar fellow with a criminal record. Oh dear. He was prone to violent outbursts. Neighbors often heard screams and shouting coming from the home. The neighbors took particular notice of Toshiko's screams, pleading with him not to hit Michio. Oh, that's terrible. As if that wasn't unsettling enough, every night the neighbors also began to hear an eerie chanting. Oh. Through this, the Shiraishis standing in the neighborhood plummeted rapidly. Oh my god. Toshiko was often seen covered in bruises and wounds. Oh my she fuck. She stopped responding to her neighbors. She would just turn the other way when greeted. They kept their storm shutters closed even during the day and effectively shut themselves away from the entire community. That sounds horrible. Why didn't the police step in and do something? 
And unfortunately, under our current laws, the police aren't allowed to get involved with domestic disputes. Fuck that! That's awful. And then Michio reportedly killed herself. Things only got worse with EY, and Toshika was admitted to the hospital for physical and mental abuse. Ever since, EY hasn't returned to the home. Many locals expressed sympathy for Michio's circumstances, but... Just as many were fed up with the Shiraishis entirely, and seemed relieved that things finally quieted down God, again. that makes me angry! Like, how far does it have to go before the police can step in? It seems that they were still considered outsiders even after three years of living here. Jesus, I don't understand it. Yeah, me neither. Why would Toshiko have gotten involved with such a brutish good-for-nothing in the first place? Good sex. I've heard many stories where one partner's personality is in a complete turn after entering a relationship. Uh... After hearing her first husband's uh, after her first husband's death, Toshiko's financial situation had also taken a turn for the worse. She was determined to send her daughter to a good high school. It's possible she fell victim to sweet promises. Oh, life can be tough, I suppose. Hey, that's the name of the chapter. Da -ha. Yeah. You know, I honestly forgot what the chapter's <laughs> title was. But, uh, hey, name drop! You don't seem moved by the story, ma'am. That's fine. People have all kinds of stories. Look, I have my own baggage. Let me have this. <laughs> oh, investigator? Oh, so you came here, too. Oh, investigator. Huh? What is it? Yo! What's up, boys? Ah. Uh, could you repeat what you know one more time for me, Richter? Hi. <laughs> well, we can now resume Sutsumi's chapter, Fancy oh, Sushi. that's fun. And that's what we're gonna do next time on Paranorma Sight! Don't miss the next exciting episode. It's exciting, I swear. Fancy Sushi. Fancy Sushi. Again.